Oh, we're on. And we're live. So what I always do is I wait, even though whenever I put this thing on YouTube, okay, this, this portion's on it. All right. So it's kind of fun. But so we're just waiting for one you just wait for somebody to get on there. Person to get on. Oh, there they are. Dang man. There they are. Who is it? How? We got one person. Hey, Holy where do, cow! Where do, where do you see that? Right there. Now we got two. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I see, yeah. I see it. Cool. All right. So basically, what I have is I got your name tagged in there too. Okay. And so, all your friends will Sweet. probably see it now. Yeah. So, well, welcome. Thank it's you. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. A, a full month. A full month. That we've uh, we booked longer. this thing. Maybe longer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had to push it back a week. We did. We did. I went to Lake Tahoe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for keeping that a secret, too. Fiance. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I was like, hey, Courtney, by the way. Uh, <laughs> no, no, you came up to me and you said, like, you got to push me. the thing back because uh, you got to go to Tahoe. <laughs> right. Awesome. Right. Thanks for thanks for going on a surprise trip. Right. You, you came up to me and you were like, all right, man, I, I want to put you on. I was like, yeah, absolutely. This is going to be great. And you said, all right, we're going to do it um, the 9th. And I was like, oh, or with the 8th or something. something like that, yeah. And I was like, oh, what the but I, Courtney was right there. And I was like, yeah, all right, that sounds great. That sounds great. The hey, man, by the way, bro. Yes, we can't do it on the 8th. <laughs> no, nah, man, we're going to Tahoe, man. I got some yeah. prizes, bro. I can't yeah. tell you about it, but I got some. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love it. Well, let's see. We got, we got some folks watching. So um, this is episode four of the m and m and m I added an extra M in there. It's just m and m and ms um, where we're going to cover marketing, aka mu or I'm jumping the gun here, marketing, aka business, right? So, uh, there's no other business term that starts with an M that I'm aware of right now. So, we're going to go with marketing. Um, we'll dabble into some music as well. And then, uh, the favorite part, the juicy part mm. that we all wait till the end for, the musings. And uh, if you're new to the show, which hopefully there's some new folks. The musings portions, it can be anything, right? We can talk about, you know, when people are down in the dumps, what do they do to continue to get themselves out of it, how they lead their family through it. I mean, we've had, this is our fourth guest now. Um, we've had some incredible stories, so I'm sure this one's going to be just as good. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoy. Most episodes will be about an hour long. And then after it's, we're done with this, I typically have it on YouTube the day or two after that. So if you don't already, go check out the YouTube page. You can just type in m and ms but it's typed out, Marketing Music and Musings. If you would, excuse me, follow us on there. That way you can go and check the other episodes. And then, again, what's interesting about starting this podcast, which I thought was really cool, because I've had this idea Jealous. for a little while, and uh, and people kept going, you should have a podcast, you know. You know how people are. They're encouraging. You're like, are they really... I was probably like, one of those you know, people. Yeah, you're like, hey, you should do this, you bro. Do this, I'm like, thanks, Danny. That's a weird compliment, man. Uh, but so after like 15 people said to do it, I started thinking about, well, what would I do if I did a podcast, right? Obviously, music, that's a given. That's easy, yeah. right? No, There's no guessing there. Um, but one thing I didn't realize is how many of my friends and family are in business in one shape uh, or another, meaning they're... <clears throat> either obviously working, which most people do, which is great, but at the same time, people are working for themselves. They're their own right. bosses, right. right? In some capacity, yeah. Um, you know, they got side gigs that they're doing, or they're they're starting their side business. It's their dream, while they're still grinding at their other job, and it's just incredible to hear the stories. So, um, we want to use this as a platform to also promote those businesses as well, because why not continue to help people hit their dreams, Absolutely. man? Absolutely. So, um, so that being said, we got Danny Styles on here. I've known Danny. It's been a long time now. 10, 15 years. I was years, trying to think like about it too. I want to say it's in between ten and fifteen. I want to say it's probably twelve, something like that. Years. It's somewhere because, um, like, I met Jeff Harwell. Yeah. For all you people that don't know, your boy he's Jeff. He's probably on there. He's, he's still in my damn phone as Jeff Horn because when I worked at Taco Mac, <laughs> I would put people's first names like. Adam Mac, right? right? Tina Mac. So everybody's Mac. Well, same thing. Everybody that I, you you were Danny Horn for a while, and so was Brian. Brian Horn uh, oh, for a long yeah Horn. for Longhorn. Oh. So I'm like Jeff Horn, like, bro. Gotcha. Yeah, so yeah. anytime I met somebody from uh, Longhorn or really any <laughs> restaurant at that point, yeah. like especially Lowe's, I'm like Jimmy Lowe's. Be like, who the hell is Jimmy Lowe's? Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, so I got a question. Let's hear. I love I love so, questions. How do you remember us? 
coming uh, into Taco Mac? That's a good question. Um, so <laughs> I'll leave I'll leave some people's names out of this <laughs> out of this deal. So I was working at Taco Mac, and I'm like this, you know, piss and vinegar, you know, 19 year old kid, right? Yep. And um, I uh, I had just quit working at Circuit City. Right. Okay, I didn't know this part. Yeah, yeah. So I was selling uh, computers, so laptops, PCs, floppy disks. Oh man, old school Pippin, dude. Yeah. I was there when the first Sandisk SD card that was that a is. gig. People were like, it's a gig. Oh my god, this is a, or no, but it was a megabyte. Excuse me. People like, oh my god, it's a megabyte. You know about a damn yeah. uh, digital camera uh, okay. memory card. Yeah, okay. People were going melting people down. It was like one hundred twenty dollars. I'm like, damn, y'all are crazy with this dang memory That's card, crazy. bro. Yeah. But anyway, so I was working there, uh-huh. and uh, I was basically working all the time because I had just graduated high school, and I was busting my ass, and I was coming home with like a you know six hundred dollar check after two weeks of busting my ass after taxes. Yep. I'm like, this sucks. Well, one of my best friends, Jeff Foster, he went and got a job at Tacomac, right? And he's like, Brent, you are, you will love this place, man. It's fun. There's girls to hang out with. I was like, yeah, it's okay. I like this. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I think you would kill it, man. I think you come over here. You just, with your personality, man, you start waiting these tables. So I was like, all right. So it was my first restaurant gig is for waiting tables. I worked at Panera and a damn, uh, I worked at, what's that place? I can't even think of it, but it was a uh, Hibachi Grill that's no longer, Sapporo. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to yeah. go. I, I was a bus boy there, so I was like basically the only white dude working there. Uh, everybody else was. Uh, it was funny. It was a Japanese steakhouse, but it was owned by Koreans. Everybody there was a oh, Korean. Okay. I was like, whatever, man, that's cool. <laughs> but I had to go get the grease traps out. I digress. So I started working there, and so I'm just like on fire, right? And then you guys start coming in right after the shifts are basically starting to wind down, right? So. So we started coming in right when you started. Pretty much, okay. Because yeah. okay. you guys would get done. That. Yeah, because you guys would get done with y'all shifts yeah. probably about ten, maybe yeah. ten thirty, something like that. And we were always up until two. I know. Well, right. I got in there, and after a while, I was like, "Yo, I want to sit here. I got all this energy, man. I'm either you know uh, late or I'm closing this bitch." <laughs> and eventually, I just started closing the whole time. So that's why we always hung out yep. because by the time y'all came in. I still had four hours to go. Right. And so, I mean, there, how many tables come in between 10 and 2? Not many. Right? That's, I mean, and that's you, why we love going there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you might get like six tables. So right. guess who I'm hanging out with? Oh, Y'all those. silly asses. So, <laughs> but it was mainly you, Jeff, and then uh, the other Brian. Reese. Uh, Reese. And Pat, too. Pat used to go in there as well. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, it was it was it was mainly us. you three. Yeah, it was. And then you know, just the Lone Ranger, because he's like working Monday night bar. <laughs> <laughs> His ass is rolling in like, hey man, I might do this dude. Uh, but <laughs> since we're on this, let me I'll tell you a funny little story, and then we'll we'll jump into it. All right. So Jeff comes in one night, and oh, you remember how the bar has this little like um Dip. like so yeah. So Jeff was sitting right here at the right? top of it, yeah, basically at the like where the bin comes, right. So he's hanging out here. <clears throat> There's no one else there except for this big dude, and he's definitely roided out. Like, this dude's jacked, and he's got, like, something wrapped around his hand, right? It's not a cast, but it's – you can tell something happened to his hand, right? Okay. Just keep that in your head. All right. Broken, so, hand. Broken hand. All right. So you know how the service bar is right there, and it has all these olives on it? Yes. Right? So remember I used to throw olives at people all the time? I know. So <laughs> this is great. So at the time um, – this lady Kim was working there, right? And she was, uh, I think she was closing, right? And she had tables that were out on that patio where y'all used to go outside and smoke, right? And then there was a table right there by the patio door that she was waiting on, right? I had one table left, so I'm basically just fucking with Jeff the whole time, right? So Jeff is sitting here, and I'm throwing stuff at Jeff, and then I'm sitting here, I'm like, watch this, dude. I'm uh, going to see if I could sit here and and throw this at, at that door, right? So... It, timing just worked out perfect, but I sat here and I threw this dang olive and it hit the door and then it hit Kim, right? <laughs> at the same time, the table right here just started laughing at some other joke that was going on. Kim turns around and is like, what the hell? Why y'all throwing stuff at me and all this stuff? And me and Jeff just start dying <laughs> laughing, right? And so I'm sitting here, I'm like, I can't just go out with that. You know what I'm saying? I got to uh, obviously take it over the, you know. Just the just over the top, yeah. right? I can't just have that fun, you know, knowing me. So I keep sitting here and throwing stuff at Jeff and messing with him. 
Well, sure enough, I throw one really hard and he like dodges it and it goes and hits that dude in the hand. <laughs> and this dude just goes, ah, he like starts screaming and just like, oh my God, you're going to get killed, bro. You just threw a dollar at this dude's broken hand. It was just a trip. <laughs> Anyway, that's awesome. Yeah, so great question. Yeah, well, let that. me tell you from our perspective too. Yeah, yeah let me hear so, this. So, yeah, we were punks at that time. I mean, we were we were uh, we were all bartending, and we'd all pretty much have shifts together. And yeah, like you said, we'd get off about ten o'clock, get done rolling your silverware, make your money, and you make some money at Longhorn every now and then. You can make a little bit, and then what we do? Go straight over to Takamak and. Spend it all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta drink this, man. Uh, oh maybe maybe so get some wings. You guys had the golden tea set up. You guys had just about every kind of beer you'd want. And, uh, yeah, we'd go over there and hang out with you, and, and that's how we met you. I remember you had the huge fro. Mm. Huge fro. Missed that fro. And you'd always just cut up with us. When we were always like, oh, man, that dude's cool, man. Throw something at him. Get him, get him. <laughs> <laughs> man, that guy's cool. Throw some trash at him. And I yeah, yeah. And every now and then you'd hook us up maybe with a drink or two if yeah. you could and stuff. So we were like, all right. And it worked. We kept coming back. Right, kept giving them money. And I wasn't even the bartender. You see that? See, I, I know. I look out for exactly. everybody's economy, exactly. man. That's right. I'm an economist, man. That's I look right. out for that. I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it had to do with Jeff. And then we used to always come over for the Georgia, Florida. Yeah, he started inviting you over for that. And, That's how I um, met basically the whole crew after that. That's where I met your that. brother. Yep. And um, Mark. Everybody. Pat, the whole gang, and freaking yeah. Dave Grohl. Yeah. That's right. And then and then you brought sort of bringing Candace over. And That's how we met Candace. Yes, because I so I started dating Candace. It was funny because we dated on and off from night when I was nineteen to twenty one, and then at twenty one I couldn't mess around anymore. Like she's like, either we gonna date, we ain't gonna date. And I'm like, damn, all right, we dating then. <laughs> So I'll tell you this, that's my, how that my, worked my out. My first memories of Candace too, when she she was, I remember her just not being shy, at all. She was just like part of the crew immediately, and it was great. It was like, all right, cool. And she was a huge Georgia fan, so like it fit right into that rivalry. So it was fun. So absolutely. No, she's good people. Yeah. Well, um, well, thanks for taking me down memory lane. Yeah, that was no fun. That was good. So we'll get into our first M, okay. right? Uh, which is marketing, but in your terms, we're going to go business. So. Um, T give us an idea, paint us a picture, right? And take us back to not only why we got into this thing, but tell us what we're in right now What we're in, in terms of what you do for a living. Yeah, so I work at um, a law firm, Schaeferitz and Dean, Schaeferitz. LLC. Mm. Schaeferitz. Schaeferitz. Yeah, mm. I know. So, and actually, um, Mr. Schaeferitz just passed away last oh, year. That's so. unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, it is. But we're keep, but we're definitely keeping the name for in his memory. He was pretty much the backbone of the firm. He really was the cool. face of it. Um, but it's a it's a real estate firm, uh, mainly doing closings. Um, and I, I, wa I prepared. I watched your other episodes and it's your good first to prepare, guest, man. Uh, Richie Torrance. Um, I'm, I used to work at a firm called Thomas and Brown before I was with Schaeferts and Dean. I'm almost positive that we worked with him too. So I know that if anyone watched that episode, it's so, we're sore in the same business, but um, we're more in the legal field of it. So um, he he was he was he's an agent, I believe, too. So yeah, Correct. yeah. Right. So I'm almost positive we worked with him. That name sounds so familiar, um, and I probably met him before too. Honestly, probably. Richie's met everybody. <clears throat> yeah. Like I'm like, have you met? Yeah. I'm like, I haven't even said his name yet. Yeah, that episode you know? was great, by the way. Too. Oh yeah, no, it was Richie. Awesome. Man, Richie was a fantastic dude, guest. All the like the people he knew in Nashville and stuff that was crazy. I know. It was cool. Well, the best part about Richie is he's a super humble dude. I've known Richie yeah. roughly about ten years now, and I met him through one of my really good friends. Uh, Justin and we're all just like brothers and uh, that's one thing I love about Richie he's always been like that where he's never going to be bragging about anything that he's got going you gotta you gotta pull like even on the podcast I yeah. had to pull it out on my like, tell me about Emmy Lou Harris bro tell right, me about he's right, like right. well I don't really know if I want to tell oh, man, I'll tell you I'm like dude this is yeah. just He's such a great guy. Very interesting. It was awesome. Great guy. But it's in the same field, except we do the legal aspect of it. We do the actual closing. So in Georgia, um, uh, it's we're, it's called an attorney state. So um, you have to do a closing in front of an attorney. Um, so and, and actually, the trend is going away from that, unfortunately. So a lot of states have gotten to where you can just be a, a, a notary and do a closing. But... In Georgia, you still, have to, you still have to do your closings in front of an attorney, and that's basically what we do. We do other things as far as estates and trusts and stuff like that and title work but um, and deeds. We can prepare deeds and anything like that, but we mainly do the closings. 
Um, but the, the biggest portion of what we do is we clear the title of a property. Got it. Now, this is probably going to be kind of boring. And, no, and we'll I, hear it. Let's hear it, man. Let's hear it. get munched into it. No, most of my people are like, man, I've been <laughs> but, waiting around to listen about some deeds. <laughs> but, I mean, thank yeah, God we're tuning exactly. in this evening. So <laughs> when, you, when you buy a house, um, you want to make sure that when you're buying it, that your house is clear of liens, of anything, like even a water bill. Like You don't want to be stuck paying somebody else's water bill, the former owner's water bill. Well, it's not just water. It can be an HOA. It can be taxes that weren't paid for. It can be any sort of lien that uh, has gone against your property. And and most people think their properties, every, every time we have a closing, it's, oh, there's, it'll be clean. Trust me, there's nothing there. And it always comes up. There's three or four things every time. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. So our job is to clear is it. That, is that what jinxes it? They're like, it's definitely clean. No, just move forward. I'm like, telling you. Dude, you just jinxed it, man. That and was going to be eight things. It's the ones that are so adamant are the ones that have the most yeah, Are we have to cuss on this. <laughs> you can do whatever you yeah. want. The this, you're, the, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. you're the guest. You do whatever the hell you want. There you go. This is your podcast They're usually episode. The, the most yeah. messed up. Let's put it that way. Title. I love it. So we we're in charge of clearing that, making sure that when that buyer takes possession, that it it's clear of all liens, and that title is it's called clear marketable title. That's the legal term. Um, but I recently just became an attorney, uh, just passed the bar. Well, I took the bar in October, passed it in December. Um, still in the training portion of everything, still learning, still a sponge. But I have been doing closings on my own already. Nice. So working my way up. Um, I'm low on the totem pole as far as the attorneys go at my firm, but um, which means I'm the one that's probably going to have to go all over the place. Hey, we got a, we got a closing and coming in yeah, Gainesville. You, 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 that's you. That's yeah. you. <laughs> uh, how far is it? 45 minutes, Danny? Well, Danny? Yeah. Danny, can we get it? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, this, this one's at 7.30 p.m. We got yeah, Danny's yeah. got Danny, it. Danny, you ain't got yeah, no chips or chips, man. Get is, out there, bro. Which is fine, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'm going to be that guy, and that's cool. Like, you got you to gotta put in the work, man. You got to right. right. take it, and man. I, and, and to me, it's exciting, though, because it is a different... I've been doing this sort of law for a while as, like, as basically a paralegal, uh, pre-closer, closer, uh, and a post-closer. But now I can get to a point where, like, I'm doing something different. I'm actually meeting with the people. I have to go with, you know, every document and, and explain what he, what everything means, the, the money, the, just everything. And, and uh, I'm still it, – it is it is more fun. It's more fun doing that. I, that's me, man. I, I'm right. a bartender, so I'm more of a people person. Oh, for sure. Like, well, if you take the people out of the deal, like, that, that kills half of it. Like, you're like, this yeah. isn't – I'm not trying to be best friends with this legal document. Yeah, you know exactly. Saying? Like, exactly. But that's that's basically what we do. But you know, like I said, we can we can do just about any kind of deed uh, conveyance as far as that goes. Um, we can do uh, estates and stuff like that. We can set up estates, set up trust, that sort of thing. But mainly, uh, like ninety nine percent of what we do are the closings of it. Interesting. So, yeah. So I but, like it. But you know, when it comes to that, you know, it's the I remember coming into this profession thinking, uh, or this legal field, thinking, oh, you know what, this is going to be the best the best law um, field because you're dealing with happy people. You're dealing with, oh, people are selling their house, buying their house. It's going to be great. You know, I get to leave at 530. I, get, I, don't, I got weekends. You know, mo most lawyers don't have that. You know what I mean? They're, you know, they're 24-7, uh, you know, with their beeper. Yeah, I'm that old. but Just grinding it. But bro. grinding it, exactly. And, and, I, you know, I get my time off with it. So it's actually a really cool. But not, not everything is as peachy as it sounds. Of. Oh, you, I'm sure. You, you get into, you know. I don't want to get too detailed, but for instance, you'll have a divorce where they're selling their house and the, they can't be in the same room together because it's such a tumultuous, you know. Yeah. So you do deal with things like that and yelling and screaming sometimes, but you gotta, yeah, you gotta make you gotta, sure gotta you gotta get both sides it. of the spectrum. But man. That, that's basically what we do. It's, um, you know, you, we network a lot too. That's it's a big portion of, of this business. It's funny too. that you because that was gonna be my next question. You it's have like, to. How are you guys? How are you keeping the pipeline full? Um, well, fortunately we do certain types of closings that other firms won't do. We do what's been called investor closings. I don't want to get into, because it is kind of boring, but basically we deal with people who flip houses. Most people don't, a lot of firms don't do that because it is a lot. It's right. because usually these people that are flipping houses, the, the houses they're buying are shit and their titles are messed up. So most firms don't want to deal with that, clearing that title. Right. And the investors are really, really, really pushy because they want to sell it quick and get their money fast. 
So it's it, it a lot of firms don't deal with that. We do, and we like specialize in that. Actually, oh, we're sweet. really really good at, with investors. All right. Um, and so with investors, it's really cool. You get you get good in with an investor. They have their own network that they work with because they have buyers that they just have ready, and they have sellers that they know where to get from. And so they're friends with other investors, and they connect us really easily. So cool. they connect us. All right. And that goes along with agents as well. Like you want to keep a good relationship with your agents. Uh, the Richie Torrance's of the world. Oh, Richie! It's uh, Richie. It's a, knew, that, that's Richie's so like he's, he's, he's that dude man. leaks into all my episodes. That's right. The heck, it. Richie! Get out of this episode. <laughs> but he, um, yeah, but he, but the agents are really important too. You so we have these um, not now because of COVID, but we'll have these like uh, it's my old firm. They call them Thirsty Thursdays, and they just we like for two or three hours. We'll you know you come to this whatever place. It's different every time and. Hey, come get a drink. Hey, mingle. Uh, the drinks are free. We want to meet. Just kind of network that way. And you get cool. more and more, you know. And if an agent feels comfortable with you, they're going to always suggest to their clients to, hey, we want to come to that firm. So you do that. And then um, loan officers, so the lenders. Because ultimately, we represent the lender. We represent the banks and right. all of this. Yeah, you're the you're the liability guy. Right. right. So they are our clients. The not not the buyer, not the seller, but the lenders are our clients. So we want to make them happy as well. And if you make them happy, they'll keep suggesting you as well to their clients. So right. it's a lot of networking, which most legal professions don't have to deal with. And you know, when when you're doing the closing, you kind of have to have a smile on your face and hey, I, you know, it is sort of a. a, a personable yeah. uh, job unlike most legal fields most legal field lawyers is going to be and they do whatever they want whatever they want yeah. exactly like, i'm in a bad book today <laughs> right you know, all right so, john right but so that's basically what we do and uh i'm a new attorney there so it's pretty cool but i've been with the firm for almost two years now and i was at thomas and brown for three and a half so i've been in the field for about five and a half years now nice yeah. So why don't we take a step back? Sure. What What made you? I think I know the answer. Yeah. But what made you want to go into law? Tell oh, us. Sure. T- oh, tell man. us the, the passion into law. Oh man, let's let's hear it, bro. Yeah. All right. All right. So, man, this was a, this was a while ago too. So I got done with college, KSU. Oh man, go Alice, man, hootie hoo, baby. Poli sci degree, uh, minor in international affairs. And this is why we're good at trivia together, man. <laughs> I'm missing trivia. Yeah, too. no, I am too. All right. Sorry. But throw, um, throw the whole so thing off. Talk about trivia. We can, uh, we'll, let's get into that. Yeah, get some too. trivia, man. Yeah. You guys some. hopefully Brent Blackwell's watching. That's my dude, man. He has the best oh, trivia. Is he a trivia guy? Yeah. He lives he in Lawrenceville. He need... I always make fun of him. He doesn't live in Lawrenceville. But I'm like, why are you living in Lawrenceville? He's like, I don't live in Lawrenceville. I just, <laughs> I, live in Lawrenceville. <laughs> I know, but I just I always pick on him. But no, he used to be at dry County and, um, and that we would do it on Tuesday nights, remember? Oh man, that was, I was there. Yeah, yeah. so I was there every so um, but it man. was just it would be like eight of us, but at the end it'd be me and you. Yeah, yeah, we'd be crushing, bro. <laughs> I know. But man, that's my dude, Brent. He just had twins. Oh, cool. Yeah, and they look just like him. That's great. That's I awesome. love it. So anyway, back to All the right, passion what got me filled. Into law. So yeah, I got uh, done with school, with my undergrad, but I was just fucking around, man. I was in, I was bartending, like which was great. Don't get me wrong; it was like decent money. Hanging out with my friends. It was fun. It was great. But, I, I mean, I got to a point where I was like, all right, <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do now? Yeah, I think we all what got to that point after now? a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, you, you hit that halt. And for me, like, I hit those halts pretty quickly. Like, when I got done with college, it was like, all right, cool, I got done with it. And then about a year went by, and I was like, all right, let's do something here. Let's, you know what I mean? So. Did you try to get jobs using the poli sci? No. Okay. I didn't. I didn't. I mean, what would you do anyway? I, if I look back, a, looking back a, on it now. data, uh, I don't even know. Yeah, exactly. What would you do? Like a historian or a <laughs> librarian or something. I don't know. Hey, hey. But <laughs> I don't know exactly. I, that was a thing. Uh, I didn't welcome know. Welcome in local historian, and Denny Styles. He goes poli sci. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, uh, Lord awesome. help us. That's funny. Yeah, but that was the thing. Like, I was, I was kind of stuck. Really, and you know what? Looking back on it, there were definitely options I could have done. I could have applied places. I could have gone. Oh, I'm sure there's downtown something, Atlanta yeah. and found something. Who but knows? I didn't do that. I was just I don't know. Uh, so I had a friend of mine. She moved to Massachusetts and started going to law school. Uh, and 
uh, I, I used to talk to her frequently. She's a good friend. And she got in touch with me. She's like, Danny, you should do this. Like, this is kind of right up your alley. But the first year, she was like, you would enjoy this. Mm. And I, I remember hearing it first. I was like, nah, like, I don't know, nah. It's a lot, it's like a lot of money, right? Like, a lot of time. Mm-hmm. But, like, both. Yeah, but I, I feel like she just, she kind of plugged at me, and and, uh, and it worked eventually. I was like, I, I got to a point where I was like, what am I doing? Let's 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 just take this to the next degree. And I did. I, I like I, Quite literally. Quite literally. Got so, you uh, took it to the next law degree. She did. And and uh, uh, shout out Carrie Domzalski, by the way, who's still living in Massachusetts. But nice. I did. I ended up getting, uh, I was like, let's just see what happens. So I went and took my LSATs, did all right. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, now what? And I actually did my first year in Massachusetts. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What was, moved, was moved law there. school? Um, UMass. Oh, UMass cool. at, at their uh, uh, Dartmouth campus. Oh, look at and you. So, yeah, I did my first year there. All right. And uh, it was cold, man. Hell yeah, it is. It's Massachusetts, bro. <laughs> it was really <laughs> cold. I don't think it ever gets hot. It gets Dude, warm. I have so many stories yeah. about Massachusetts, man. Some of them are great. I still know people up there. It was a lot of fun. I met some really cool people that I still am in touch with. You know what's weird, though? All the people I met, like my best friends up there, were all from the South. And it wasn't like I was Dude. trying to seek them out. It was like That's it how it works. came together. It, it was, was weird. We, me and my brother went to Boston. He was working in Rhode Island. And so I flew up to Boston because Widespread was playing at the Orpheum. Right? Oh, nice. And so we're like, well, let's meet up, hang out, and, uh, you know, we'll see Boston. Sure enough, I go up there and we're watching, um, we're watching the dog. It was like towards the end of the season, right? Because we're like, we got like one game left, and it's either us or South Carolina that's going to win the East, right? Awesome. So we're playing Auburn, right? <clears throat> we're in this bar, and it's like an Engl- Irish pub, right? And I see Ooh. a, it's weird, I see a, a South Carolina flag, and I'm like, what the, f-? I'm like, that's really weird, man. In South Boston. Carolina flag right. in Boston? Yeah. And sure enough, man, they're playing the 7 o'clock game, we're playing the 3.30 game, right, versus Auburn, and it hinges on, if we win this game, South Carolina's out. If we lose this game, they got a, an opportunity. If they win, they get to go. Right, okay. to the SEC championship. Gotcha. So we're playing Auburn, and we're killing them literally the whole game. And all these folks start coming in that are South Carolina. We all start talking. Oh, man, I'm from South Carolina. We're from Georgia. You know, we all kind of getting buddy-to-buddy. Well, towards the end, and there's like 15, 20 of them. Right? It's me and my brother in there. We've been drinking all day. So we're like, yeah, we're best friends with everyone. Right? Sure enough, that whole situation happens where I think they did a kickoff, and then Auburn runs the whole thing back. Oh. Course. And like, dude, they start freaking out and like hitting. I'll be like, oh, and I'm like, dude, this is ridiculous. So that's my that's my Boston story. Yeah, show up in a South Carolina oh, so bar. Lost. Yeah, and then so they and they ended up went going on and they played their seven o'clock game and they won it. So they went to the SEC. South uh, Carolina tim- went to the SEC championship. Yeah. This yeah. must have been during those Spurrier years. It was like six or eight years ago. Yeah, but to your that. point, there was freaking. Uh, it was a South Carolina bar, and they all oh, said yeah. the same thing. They're like, dude, it's crazy. All these South Carolina alumni are all up here. It's, it was weird. So, and yeah, my best friend there was uh, from Louisiana. They went to Ole Miss. I was friends with a girl that went to lived in Tampa. I was friends with a girl that lived in South Carolina. It was weird, and it wasn't like on purpose. It was like it just happened that way. It was weird. They, but, they gave the North a go. But I met some cool people from the North too. I mean, I still have friends there. But ultimately, I couldn't live there, man. I just couldn't. I don't blame you, man. I got a quick story too. My first day. First day in, in Boston. Uh, it's actually it was actually in New Bedford, which is like forty five minutes south of Boston. It was like on the coast. Like I could walk to where they take off for Martha's Vineyard. I was like right there. Cool. But um, I had to get groceries. Right, I had to get groceries on my first day. So I went to uh, they call it, they're, they're called Stop and Shops up there. That was that's like their Kroger. Go in there, and uh, there just happened to be like some sort of like hurricane it wasn't a hurricane though it must have just been like a tropical storm but it was something they haven't experienced like ever up there it was like crazy and i mean i got in this grocery store and people were going crazy it's like what happens when it snows down here so they were getting the mill of the, the water and bread and i mean it was just like there was nothing for me so i got what i could and i'm checking out and i'm looking around and i'm like yeah man, this is crazy it's all for a storm right and i look at the cashier and i'm like man, y'all are busy, aren't you? And the cashier, I swear to God, just stops in her tracks, just stops and, like, looks up at me. Like that. And I'm, like, looking around, I'm like, what did I say? What did I do? And she just goes, 
you're not from here, are you? <laughs> and I go, no, I'm not, actually. And she goes, it just goes right back and doing it. And I'm like, what the hell was that, right? So I'm literally thinking about, I'm like, what the hell? So I'm, I'm walking back to my car, and I'm going, what was that about? And, then I, and I thought about it. And I was like, oh, I know what it was. I said, y'all. Oh. I said, the, y'all. You dropped the, the southern gym on them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. She got me. She was I just love like, it. It's just funny. She's how like, she this dipstick saying y'all. And I was like, all right, this is cool, Boston. All right. Yeah, that's funny. But no, just like, I'm telling you, man, the snow, having to get up 20 minutes early just to shovel your driveway, yeah, no, shovel no. your car. Ugh. That sounds terrible. Yeah, and it was just too much. And I, I wanted to come back to family and friends, too. So, yeah, but, we're, we're so glad I glad you came back. Yeah, I, I was happy, too. Um, so I heard, um, and tell me if this is true or not, yeah. but I heard that you kind of got into law because you were thinking about being a sport agent at yeah, one time. Yeah, I did, too. Well, I, that was all, I mean, that's always, like, your absolute dream. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so yeah when, I mean, she, uh, Carrie pushed me into that direction and it was like do it and I, and I went that direction but in my back of my head i'm thinking yeah i could be a i could, I could be a sports agent and, I was, and of course like but then you get into it and you realize man to be a sports agent you have to have money mm. you have to start with money you have to start with capital so and yeah. i don't have that so gotcha. I, I mean that's still something i would love to do but i think you have to that, that, that's a profession you really have to have connections in um because or, or unless you know an athlete if you, right. If you or if you friend. were, if you were an athlete, and then <laughs> yeah. you're like I'm the an athlete that I went to law school <laughs> because I'm so good, yeah. and then I rolled out and yeah. just like uh, your boy, uh, you know, Dwayne Johnson in Ballers. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what he did. That's right. See, he was. Oh, he wasn't. A, he wasn't an agent though. But no, but he was. Remember? But he yeah, was like, he was, he like, was the, like the financial. Yeah, he was like the in between guy. Yeah, he's like the financial consultant guy. Because every everything he was doing is what an agent's supposed to do. And I was like, dude, you're an agent. Just call yourself right. an agent. But he wasn't. Yeah. Without the law degree, he didn't want to go get yeah. the law degree. That's right. And he also he or right. be, become an esquire. He could have <laughs> taken the this. damn. That's right. So there you go. There you go. Is it weird that I don't like the word Esquire? I mean, it's cool uh, that I have that tag, but I just, I just feel I mean, like it's too... I, I think it's know. cool. Yeah, it's all right. Esquire. Yeah, Esquire. I mean, it sounds cool. Yeah. Esquire Magazine doesn't. No. But like Esquire, yeah. at the end of your name, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, anything but, that you can add at the end is kind of cool. Okay. Um, well, I appreciate you sharing that. Well, and then what got me into real estate law oh, yeah, is yeah, a different yeah. story. Because I hated property law in law school. I hated it. It's the it's the most boring. It's the hardest. It was the hardest for me, but you know what? It just it happens to fall in your lap sometimes. I was bartending, and this dude walks in. He's like fifty, right? Sharp looking dude, handsome looking guy. He walks in by himself, comes up to the bar, and everyone at the bar knows him. Goes up to him, shakes their hand. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? I'm like, who's this guy? You know what I mean? What is this guy doing? Mm. So I'm just kind of like overhearing, like, why is this? Why does everyone know this guy? And um, I could hear that he was an attorney. I overheard that portion of it. Like, oh, I have a law. And I was like, oh, okay. And this is my first, this is when I first moved back. So I came right. back, got my job back at Longhorn. So you were already in the law field. Yeah, so exactly. In your mind, basically. Exactly. You're already on so that path. So I was like, all right. I'm, and, I've been, and I've been already like, I want to get out of bartending at this point. So <clears throat> I overheard it. And I, after everyone had talked to him, I went up to him and I was like, introduced myself. I was like, hey, I'm not only your bartender, but I'm also a law student and I'm talking to him and he was, and, and his name's Lon Thomas from Thomas and Brown. Lon Thomas. Lon Thomas. And, um, he, uh, you know, I talked to him for a little bit and he, he was, man, very personal, just a good dude. Really, really great guy. <laughs> I remember talking to him. I was like, so what kind of law do you do? And he's like, I do real estate law. And I was like, ah, oh, man. <laughs> I was like, I hate, man, this I was hate, going great until you hate, said that. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I hate property law. That sounds terrible. He looked me dead in my eyes and he goes, I hate it too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was so funny, man. And I was like, really? And, he, he, and we just got to talking and he was like, you know what, man, give me your resume. And I did. And he hired me. And, and that's how I got out of the bar business was him. Cool. So I went and worked for Thomas and Brown after that. So that, and it just, I've been with still in the same industry for five and a half years. So Interesting. that's how I got into real estate. I like law. it. I yeah. love it. No, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Well, let's segue into oh, the music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Time. I have I like, no clue. That's right, what, cool. that's the best part about yeah, it. That's great. You got a watch on. I don't even, I, don't, oh, yeah. I typically don't even have one. What time we start at? Uh, seven thirty. Six thirty. Six fifteen. Seven thirty. Four thirty. Yeah. All all four of those. We started at seven. Seven thirty. Okay. Yeah. So thirty minutes. That's not bad. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah. 
we got plenty of time. I mean, right. really, we can do whatever. I always try to, like we talked about before, I try to keep it at around an hour. Okay. Mainly because that's how I consume podcasts. If yeah. it's over an hour and too far over an hour, I can't really listen to the whole thing while I work out or when I'm like going to and Dude. from work or any of that. If you start branching it out, less and less people will consume the whole thing. And the whole thing's important. Especially this this whole model, the thing that I got set up, the yeah. whole thing's important. You got to hear a little bit about, you know, Agreed. I'm telling you, it just, it builds. It's it's a good, I like to toot my own horn. I think it's badass, <laughs> but, you know, let's, we'll see. It is, it is. We'll and, see. And by the way, thank you for having me on, man. Yeah, man. Like, it was cool as hell when you came to me and you were like, you want to be on? I was like, yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, I man. love podcasts. I listen to them all the time. And you're right. I only, if, if it's more than an hour, I literally am like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you're like, man, I don't know about all that. I, should better I be invest in that? Yeah. Or, that dude better friggin' send me a present <laughs> right. to listen to this crap. But uh, but no, I appreciate you, appreciate you joining, and it's everybody that's honor. joined so far too. And like the people, what's what's also interesting, it's like, um, you know, when you branch out, and you do something, and you know, you're you're vulnerable. It's like playing music, right? Like yeah. doing any type of art, which I consider this art. Um, yeah. There's a vulnerability portion to it, right? And the when. When you're vulnerable, that's like the first milestone. You're like, okay, I'm the vul- I was vulnerable. Okay, this is good. Then when you find out that people enjoy your vulnerability, that's yeah. like this other rewarding yeah. thing. And then when people like, because this thing for it to be, you know, art. I mean, I could sit here and talk to myself and whoever would listen, which I could do. You right, know what I'm saying I, I would do it. But it's just awesome to see all the people that want to be a part of it and people that will see me and I haven't seen them all. Like, dude, man, no, yeah. I've been watching the podcast, man. I want to be on it. I'm like. <laughs> I'll add you to the list, bro. No, no. Let's go. You yeah, know, absolutely. So, so it's been fun. But yeah, I mean, we're a uh, blessed man. We're we're booked through July right now, and the That's next awesome. couple of guests. I think it's cool because everybody that wants to do it and that I've reached out to to ask them to do it. Um, not only are they willing, but <clears throat> they hit different spectrums, right? Like yeah. you know, your in law, my sister is in the wedding um, industry. Fico's in the cl- the you know he does cleaning. cleaning yeah. Then you got Richie, our next guest. Not only does she a dance teacher, she's already in art, but she's also an intuitive. And then she also talks about um, the tarot, and she's also All into right. astrology and stuff like that. Very cool. That should be fun. And to so uh, yes, yeah, it's pretty cool. And that's another thing too. Every time you have someone on, you just add another member to your you know audience. Your podcast right. and and their bubbles, so like. But that's what I think friends. is cool. I'm so hoping that everybody's growing, growing, man. right. I, I hope everybody's enjoying it. So it's been really fun. No, it was it was awesome. I I, I went out and watched the three to prepare for this one. Yeah, and they were they were great. Oh, they yeah. were awesome. Good. So, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. So so the music portion. Okay. If you're uh, if you're new, so we do the the marketing and business portion, then we do the music. Um, sometimes we have musicians on here. Sometimes we don't. And in this case, we don't, but that is fine because he's a music lover and we love those too. Um, so tell me, okay, this is the fun part. I gotta, I gotta uncross the legs on the music part. Here we go. I, I, I built it as a sandwich, right? Because my favorite thing is in the middle, baby. This is the (laughs) meat, man. Let's go. All right. So first cassette, do you remember what your first cassette was? Uh, pretty sure it was Vanilla Ice. Oh, just the single or the entire no, record? No, the entire record. Oh, Which, interesting. by the way, that entire record is great. Is it? I need to, I need to bust that thing out. Absolutely. Okay. I'm pretty like sure that. it was Vanilla Ice. All right, first CD. Oh, man. Uh, I, I'm honestly unsure, but I do know when I was buying CDs, I owned like... Well, that's a different question. Yeah, what is the first CD you bought? I'm almost positive it was Nirvana. Oh, which one? Never mind. I think it was had to be Nevermind. Okay. But I might have bought multiple. Oh, I feel so you. So it may, it may have been Nevermind and like in utero. You want to know what's funny is the first Nirvana CD I bought was live the Muddy Banks of the Whistle. Oh, that's a great album. Which because I couldn't awesome. find any of the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is some bullshit. <laughs> I'm like, where the. No, no one plug nothing. <laughs> Damn, Muddy yeah. Banks at the Whisker. Come that's, on, that's man. A good album. I love it that is, album. but man, that was like yeah. I'm my first like full on right. album that I listened to is a live album of Nirvana. <laughs> I'm like, this is oh my god, yeah. this is not good. Yeah, um, that's funny. So those are good questions. I like that. No, I you love know, that. I, I would have to seriously think about it, CD. I'm not sure if that's right, but I think so. It would probably be something like that. I like that. Yeah. What, how did you get into music? Like, were your parents oh, always man. listening to it? What kind of music were they listening to? So, <clears throat> I grew up from what my mom listened to. 
So it was uh, Fox 97. Oh, dude, Randy and Spiff. Randy and Spiff. All boy. day. All right. Randy and Spiff. And it was so it was a lot of that <coughs> early rock and roll at doo which I still love. Man. Love. That's a great foundation of music. It is. Um, it's. <coughs> Excuse me. It's, it's simple it's, and yet complicated. It really is such a great music. I great think what's funny is the the typically the chord progressions and the beats were simplistic, mm -hmm. but the complication comes from the lyrics, right? And it made you like they painted yes. a picture back then. Yeah, they were like, "Bro, story. I'm about to dang paint you a picture, son. You about to see it too and feel it." Yeah, it just such an emotional type of uh, time, I think. <clears throat> and for doo wop especially, the way that they make their voices as instruments. And they collaborate mm. together. It's amazing. It really is like it's it's like it's simple songs just done so beautifully, in my opinion. So I'm still a huge fan of that mm -hmm. type of music, early rock and roll, doo wop, and that's what I grew up on. So I mean, she had it on all the time, and so I know all of those songs. So and uh, but then you know she had a record collection too. So she had her, you know, I remember dancing with my mom to Thriller and oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and Whitney Houston. And she was a big, big, big Three Dog Night fan. Oh, man. All right. Huge Three Dog yeah. Night fan. She loved the boss. So a lot of Bruce Springsteen. Interesting. And uh, she, had, she had an eclectic view. Uh, uh, she had a bunch of Beatles, but then she had, like, Kenny Rogers. And she like early Beatles or later Beatles? Both. Okay. So she had, like, Rubber Soul, but then she also had the White Album there, too. Cool. So she had, and I'm talking, like, first presses. She still has them, which is pretty cool. Um, but I can see your record collection. You. No, that, a lot of that is an endowment. Oh, that's about, right. Yeah, yeah. About yeah. three to four hundred of those are mine, but about a thousand of them were gifted to me by my my wonderful father in law. That's still awesome. Though. Mark Mark P. Rutt, the that's Rutt still Machine. Awesome. Collection. But um, but yeah, dude, if you want to see somebody freak out, have Richie come over here and let him look <laughs> at the the Kiss records. He will. Oh, literally. really, bro? He's been shaking me down for this dang Kiss poster because they come with all this, dude. Kiss. I'm not a huge fan musically of them. I'm not either. I, I've tried hard. I've listened to all their stuff. I just can't full on get into it. But man, they are merchandising geniuses. Oh, it's incredible, unbelievable. <laughs> it is. I mean, still, kiss, I mean, the, kiss coffins. The dude, yeah, kiss coffins. <laughs> they probably got kiss every damn thing. Yeah, it's but, crazy. Um, no, it's interesting. Back to the the Fox ninety seven situation. Yeah. What I thought was really cool because I've been listening to this podcast called Broken Record, which is uh, Rick Rubin's podcast. Oh, cool! Oh, dude, I didn't even know he had one. Dude, that's awesome. It's amazing. It's 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 unbelievable, especially when you figure out the relationships that he has with all these musicians because he's literally pretty much produced every single favorite record that you ever liked. Yeah, exactly. And you didn't even realize yep. you were like he produced that too. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. But one thing that I've been learning is not only um, different things that he's produced or project he's been a part of, but he also talks about different techniques. And mm -hmm. the reason why nothing sounds like they did back then is because everybody was basically, which just isn't surprising, but everybody was basically recording to a reel to reel, right? They were, yeah. they were recording right on tape. But one thing that other people don't realize is that they were typically all doing it at the same time in the same room on the same mic. So that's why it it's sounds awesome. like that. But it's just also the most rawest form of music that you could possibly I, obtain. I actually enjoy that more. When you clean it too much and everyone's in a different room with a different mic, every right. instrument's in a different room with a different... It, it just doesn't sound as raw. And I, and I enjoy that. Well, what's crazy too is, um, and I'll have a guest, I'll, I'll throw it out there, um, one of my buddies, Kevin Sellers, he agreed to be on here and he has a studio in, um, in uh, Marietta. And he's like, he still records in an old school fashion. Like whenever I have money to get awesome. our, our, our music recorded, I want to go to him because um, just the everything he does and like how obsessed he is with Mike. So I'm sure I'm going to learn all kinds of crazy stuff. Cool. Um, but what's crazy though is like you'll see him and follow him on Facebook and stuff. And he's always trying to get these crazy mics and trying to borrow mics for certain sounds oh, because the newer mics – that's what you have to do. They, they're just not up to par. They're not built the same way that they used to be where you can sit here and still have everybody in the, in the same room for the most part without just getting all this additional noise that you can't really right. do anything with. Right. Right. It just muddies up the whole deal. That's cool. And so it's just an interesting, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting. Uh, art. Um, it I is. I love that. So what about your dad? What kind of music did your dad listen to? Oh, man. Well, I, honestly, I'm not even sure. 
I'm not even sure. I did. I, you really? Know, You're like, bro, I didn't, you didn't study hard enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't you know, asked anybody else. I'm not even sure if he's like really a music guy, to be quite honest with you. Um, so my mom and dad divorced, and I wasn't in like a lot of contact with my dad growing up. But um, you know, I, I you know, I, I play like some old '70s rock, and he likes that kind of stuff. But right. I really, I've really had that conversation with him. Honestly. Interesting. Yeah, I know. Interesting. Um, cool. I probably need to. I'm Baby, hey, I'm teeing you up. But man. my mom, yeah, she she was probably my first beginning inspiration for music with that. And then I got older, so I hit that about 10, 11, 12 area where you finally start kind of coming into yourself. You know what right, I mean? You start yeah. figuring yourself out. You're more you're impressionable. And um, yeah, it was a great time to be that age because it was right in the middle of like grunge and yeah. gangster rap. It was oh, awesome. Man. It was awesome. It was all such the, a cool All of it was coming out, man. To be like in that air, I mean, it was like you know, Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, Smashing Pumpkins, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam. It was just Nine Inch Nails. It was just uh, it, it, it was it, great. You no, know, you had the it Seattle the explosion. It, over the there. explosion, exactly. Right. And so that happened right at a very impressionable age for me. So of course it took to me very easily. I was a big Nirvana fan. And I used to go to Media Play. I'm not sure if I oh, remember that. Oh, boo. That's my place, And man. they had this, like, international section mm-hmm. where it was, like, all of, like, the secret CDs. Well, bro, wasn't it, like, in the with. very back, but, like, also yeah. in the middle? Yeah, it was, like, like it was So only, you had like, to get through things. all this and then all this and it's, right. like, this little baby thing in the back? Yeah. Yes. I remember that. You always had to go over there because you, <laughs> you weren't sure what was hiding. You knew there was something special exactly. there. Exactly. But you didn't know what the hell was there, right. so you're like, I'm going to put it on. I'm, I'm going to put exactly. these headphones on. I'm going to listen to whatever out. the hell this is. And sometimes you get lucky, man. You get That's a little the reggae in there. And there would, oh man, they'd have so many different like foreign Nirvana albums oh like japanese japanese cuts and stuff, cuts yeah. and stuff like the songs that aren't on the other dude that's so what i would just buy God, those, I love like japanese. crazy dude so. that's so funny uh 311 has the same stuff they like it's just amazing the japanese people and how much they love music american like, music too. especially god man unbelievable mm-hmm. um how did you get into punk okay so it started with that and then um i had friends who were um, kind of gravitating more towards punk. I had two friends, especially. Um, Were they? Was it like the ska punk? No, nope. start. It, it was, was just full it was sex pistols. on. It was, nasty. It, was, it, was, it was the sex. So it was pistols. English punk. Yeah, it okay. started off with the Sex Pistols. Okay, and I didn't like it. I remember hearing it, being like, "I don't like this." Well, Johnny Rotten, you either like his voice, yeah. or you don't. Right, right. My, I like the Clash. Love the Clash. Right, the Clash is like a clean punk, right, type thing. Johnny Rotten took that same Gunner. noise and it was just like, right, you know, like right. in terms of like the way that it, it and, came across. And I was just like, man, I'm not feeling this, bro. I, I, when I first I'm not it, feeling it, man. Yeah, it, I didn't like it. And um, and they were buying things like that and um, um, the Buzzcocks and uh, Dead Milkmen, things like that. And I really wasn't into it. I really and, – and I was also getting into like classic rock. I was like in the Beatles and – the Doors. The Doors are still my favorite band of all time. Oh, I love The Doors. But, um, full on favorite, huh? Not full on. Like, interesting. Still my favorite. I love that okay. band. Okay. But um, noted. But I, I was still into like the grunge stuff, and and and, and it finally kind of hit me when they started listening to more of that skate punk in their like mm. mid nineties, ninety four, ninety five skate punk, like Rancid and stuff like yes. that. Yes. Okay. So that's what kind of clicked. That's yeah, what kind of clicked yeah, for yeah. me. And it was it was three bands in particular. It was the Bouncing Souls, okay, Less Than Jake, oh, and the Suicide Machine. So, do we consider Less Than Jake punk? I would call them ska core. That's what okay. they call themselves. Okay, all right. I'll let you off the hook with that. Yeah. They call Anytime you throw that. a horn in there, yeah, it's kind of not as punk. <laughs> I know. You know what I'm saying? That's true. You got a horn in your bit, man. You ain't That's that punk, punk, bro. That's true. But a lot of those bands in the mid '90s did that. And um, well, dude, I don't know. so the Boston's right, like the That's, Mighty Mighty Boston's. Boston's, I would call a ska band. Well, what's crazy about them though is like if you listen to any of their other music yeah. other than the um the song that blew up, yeah, right for them, yeah. Which, by the way, if you go back and you listen to that song, it was produced very, very well considering yeah. there's like 19 people on that, that track. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Because um, it tripped me out the other day. I heard I was like, dude, there's 19. I'm listening to music a lot differently now, and I'm like, there's 19 mother truckers on there, <laughs> um, but. Even back then, like the rest of their album is pretty damn good, considering it is. you know they're good. They're a great band. Um, but 
Less Than Jake. So I got into Less Than Jake pretty early in high school. Yep. Uh, but it was like, I can't even remember the record, but it was like the one record. Losing streak, I bet. Maybe it's probably what it was. If I saw the album art, I would know. Yeah. Um, and then, but I mean, they were just, I, I couldn't get enough of them. Yeah. I was like, dude, this album is amazing. And then, um, then we actually saw them. They went on tour with Pepper, out of all people. Oh, I was recently. at that show. Right. We went to that. Oh, yeah, we went to- <laughs> Yeah, we were there. I don't know if we went together. together. We, but did we, to- <laughs> we did go together. We did go together. We've been to so many shows. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Hell, I was also drinking then. I don't freaking know. Like, uh, yeah, I, don't I saw know. you there. <laughs> we did. We, we went to the bathroom once yeah, together. That was, that was the, fun. the new masquerade. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in uh, heaven. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. In the downtown. Ugh. Yeah, that was sick. That was. That, uh, the venue's cool. So what's your favorite punk band now? <sighs> Bouncing Souls is still my favorite band. Okay. Still my favorite punk band is Bouncing Souls. But, yeah, so... They got me into it, and I don't know, it just started clicking, and you hear it enough. It was an acquired taste for me. It wasn't something that I listened to. It was like, oh, what is that? For sure. And it, I acquired it, yeah. and it just, I've been just, I mean, the more you get into it, the more you love it, and I, and I, and I mean, for, you know, what, how old am I? 25 years now, so. Okay. You, were you so, into, like, no effects and stuff like that? No effects, love no effects, okay. love no effects, and, I, and even the older stuff, like, I've learned to like the Sex Pistols, still not my favorite, but I've yeah. learned to appreciate them a little what more. What about but, Bad Brains? Love them. Okay. Love them. So, so for those who don't know Bad Brains, yeah, yeah, they're a DC punk band, hardcore band from the um, early 80s, and they're all black. The entire band is black. Right. And if you go back and you um, you see interviews with anybody from that era, they'll tell you that's the baddest damn band there mm-hmm. was back then. They were the best. And it sucks because they really don't get the recognition. They've been talked about for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and whatnot. Not that that matters or anything, but... No. They really haven't gotten their due for because that's one of the best hardcore greatest punk rock bands of all time. Well, what I think is interesting about Bad Brains because you know I feel I've like seen I'm them a, live, by the way. So I'm have like, you? Yeah, nice. I feel like I'm a music historian now, right? Yeah, in, in the in a very very loose <laughs> loose sense ah. of the word, um, I'm a historian of the music that I like. What do I say that? Yeah, which is a, a lot, luckily. But um, what's interesting about Bad Brains? So they didn't come on my radar until obviously three eleven. Plays um, leaving Babylon. On oh wow! The, I didn't think I even sound- knew that. Yeah, so they that's cool. So they they have uh, on sound system, right? I always thought it was their song until I started looking at the liner notes. I'm like, Bad Brains. I'm like, who the hell is that? Yeah. And then Nick Hexum was like, Yeah, man, Bad Brains is bad, and all this other stuff. So I started checking them out, and I mean, it's definitely. I mean, they are crazy, crazy. Like you can hear insane. They've got to be jumping and hanging off the ceiling yeah. while they're recording the damn albums. Yeah, like, it's insane. But um, one thing I think is very cool about that is, like you mentioned, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which nowadays as we get older, less and less people, especially in music, give a shit yeah. about that. But one thing that people actually give a shit about is the recognition and the respect from everybody else in the music community. And Bad Brains definitely has that. Like Absolutely. Everybody that knows anything about Bad Brains and knows anything about music and how hard it is to, to live like that. They're like, dude, Bad Brains bad was brains. for real. Yeah, I mean, I, it, I promise you, if you if you like went on YouTube and looked at it, you would be like, this is horrible. So I'm not going to tell you that you're going to like this music because it's an acquired taste. It really, really is. But if you ever were to go on there, go to CBGB's. I think Ooh. it's like an 81 or 82. They have this live uh, performance. It is insane. This is crazy. I'll check it out. It is out. crazy. I've been checking. But out. the thing about them is, is like. You know, for as crazy as they were and as, as, as fast as they played, it was so good. It was so clean. It was like they're 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 one of the the greats as far as punk rock right. is for sure. That's so, cool. It's also yeah, yeah. interesting because they also, came from the DC the way, scene as well. Uh, yeah, the DC scene, which was huge back then, but that's also where the Beastie Boys got their name was from Bad Brains. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I like. That. They wanted the double B, and it was an homage to oh, Bad Brains. Cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I love that. To go back to Rick Rubin. Well, there you go. I know that. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, full circle, bro. That's right. Um, I love it. Well, um, I don't know how we're doing on time, but I'm, in, I'm enjoying it. 821. This. Oh, man. 820. Man, we were killing it, bro. How did that happen? Look at this. See? I know. You were worried. Look, pff, I know, told I you like... we got you back, dog. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, let's jump into the musings thing. Uh-oh. So, All right. Um, so the musings, again, you know, I tell people they can basically... Take it as deep or as shallow, as best that sounds, as they want. Um, but mainly the portion that I like to talk about, I think especially over the last year or so, 
Um, I was having a conversation the other day about this, so bear with me here. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking about it. It's like, you know, before 2020 started, my New Year's resolution, which I don't typically like to do those, right? I like to either do them or I like to have goals. And then I like to have objectives in order. So baby goals within larger overall goals. And my number one goal for 2020 was mental health. (laughs) That was before all this crazy stuff happened. Um, I don't tell a lot of people, just like my main people that are close to me, I don't like put on the internet and like, Hey, I I quit drinking, but you know, I'm 50, almost, yeah. In a couple of weeks, I'll be 15 months deep, not drinking. That's awesome. Right. Congrats by the way. So thanks man. Yeah. It's been great. So, um, you know, I, I decided to quit drinking on January 3rd, mainly because I was just, just sick of drinking. I just felt, I was like, dude, like I'm gonna try it, go a couple days without and see how it goes. And it was just kept going because it felt good but then obviously COVID happened right and for a lot of people you know it was a really 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 tough year I think for everybody there was something tough about it obviously right it's taxing I think one thing that's going to be apparent is after all this stuff finally subsides all the weight of what's really happening to people's psyche is going to hopefully alleviate because I think we've all just gotten extremely resilient during this whole deal for sure and I think that we're also all have extremely high levels of cortisol and other stress hormones that are in our bodies that we don't even really realize that we've built up. But my main point of saying all this is that it's also been an extreme blessing because mental health as a whole was never really on the forefront of everybody's minds until this year, right? People were talking about it. You know, it was a canned uh, term. And some people, you know, would talk about it. But for a majority of people, you know, mental health was just like climate change. <laughs> it's this figment of right, imagination right. type thing. And I just think that, um, you know, this year in this podcast, you know, just kind of linked up with being able to make it okay that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to worry about your mental health. It's okay to talk about times when you're getting your ass beat in and, you know, you don't know what else you're going to do. But then what is that little thing? What's that thing that you pull out that ends up taking you to the top, right? right. And that's one thing I liked about the, this portion of the podcast is I like to see if people want to share, you know, what might that be. And it doesn't have to be something specific. Maybe it's a litany of things. Maybe it's just something very topical. But I like to hear when things get tough, what do people do, you know, specifically for their individual sanity but also, most people have a family, right? right? And you have this, I don't want to call it a burden, I want to call it a responsibility in order to not only take care of yourself, but you got to take care of them. And that can mean a, a bunch of different things. But I think a, a good positive attitude is the number one thing that can actually go from person to person, you know, yeah. when those tough things are. So with all that being said, is there something that comes to mind or maybe just some practices that you utilize in Hearing order when things that, get crazy? Setting that up. Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, I do have anxiety, like bad anxiety. Probably many people don't know this. Um, it's like, it, it's, it's bad. And it, it, it can occur at any moment. It can, it can spark. And once it's triggered, it's, it's, it can take a toll on you. I've had to go to the emergency room a couple times because of it. Um, it can overwhelm you and it can absolutely just take a hold of you. And, um, yeah, I've had, I've been living with anxiety for probably 20 years of my life now. And it's something that for people who have never dealt with it before, it's so impossible for them to understand what it, what it feels like and what what it goes through. I mean, you know, people will tell you it feels like it's, you're having a heart attack, and they're like, "Oh, okay," but it's like, <laughs> I swear to you, it really feels like I mean, that. That sounds crazy. I've never had one you of those know, before. It, yeah. Right? And it, it just it can overwhelm you, and and um, yeah, like I, I, you know, I've had instances where I've just been just enthralled with it, and, it, and once it happens, it, it keeps on happening, and it slowly kind of digresses, and it slowly kind of goes away, and it'll be a good lull period. But then something will come back and it'll trigger it right back and you'll have it for another wave. And it's just, it's ongoing. And it's something that I've learned that I've had, just had to live with, unfortunately. Um, and it's weird because I remember the first time it happened to me, I had a, a, my first panic attack. 
Um, I had to go to the emergency room because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't understand what was happening. And I was just freaking out. I was, and I think it was like 20 or 21. And, uh, and my mom took me to the emergency room. I called her and I was like, I gotta go. I gotta go. She took me to the emergency room and they were like, you're fine. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Something's wrong. I'm like, Something, <laughs> right. check my heart. Like, Brian, did, I'm not yeah. just coming down here trying to pay this bill, bro. Right. They did an EKG right. and it was nothing. And right. it was like, no, you, you're having anxiety. I was like, what the hell is that? I was like, well, give me a pill or something and get rid of it. Like, I don't like this. This is terrible. Right. And they're like, nah, it's not going to work like that. It's in your head. <laughs> you got to go, you, you go see a shrink. No, man, we, I was can't, like, we can't I was get like, in what? there, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? And you know what? I, I, I've never gotten a um, therapy. I probably should have. Right. I've just sort of had to learn to cope with it. I've never taken any uh, medication to get rid of it. I've have sort you ever of, tried any therapy? No, no, never. None at all? No. Interesting. No. Um, and I've never taken any medication ever to, to see, good, to see if that's just work. not going to work. That's anyway. the thing. I, and that's the thing. Like for me, um, sometimes medication will spark, actually trigger an anxiety attack. Right. So that's why I was like, no, I don't even want to do that. So, but it's something that I've had to live with, cope with, uh, ways I've kind of gotten to, you know, you've got to learn how to you know, calm yourself, soothe yourself, you know, um, having Courtney has just been amazing. You know, she's every, every, people. every time I have one, she's always there to kind of like settle me down and uh, chill me out. And that always helps too. Um, so yeah, she's incredible too. So shout out to you, Courtney. Bye, so, Courtney. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> but, um, I don't but know. Yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, I've, I've definitely had to deal with that for a large portion. I love it. Well, I appreciate yeah. you sharing. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you know this. I don't know if I, I may have told you. So um, what was it? Two years ago? Basically, so I went on a 311 cruise. The, yeah, I remember the, that. The second one. And when I got off, I felt like I was having basically sea legs for... Vertigo. I mean, it was like super, super gnarly, right? And it's like a form of vertigo, but it's like, it's called its own okay. little, little deal. Mainly happens to people that have been like in the Navy. Like they've been on a ship for like six months. Okay. Not four days. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, oh, you went and danced on a ship for four days? All right, Jimmy, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> uh, so it's normally like people that have been on ships for like six months to a year, right, is who it normally affects. So, But, man, I was having this gnarly, gnarly dizziness. Like, I'm talking, I would literally like feel like I'm falling over. Um, and I went to the ENT, like the ear, nose, and throat doctor. And, of course, you know, I went through the whole gamut. And they're like, yeah, nothing's wrong. Here's some pills. You know, I took those for like two days. I was like, this sucks. Like, my stomach hurts now from taking this crap. And um, I sat here, and it got so bad that uh, when I was at my nephew's one-year birthday party, because, you know, he had a lot of um, issues when he was born. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what they were putting the photos of. And I can't really stand looking at photos, especially of babies, especially of babies I know, you know, hooked up to monitors and tubes and all this crazy stuff and it was hot as hell in there in the kitchen you know and i'm back there and i'm like getting real dizzy i'm already you know walking around dizzy half the time and then this thing happened well man i hit the ground bro i passed out like i mean i fainted and i was, came too but I mean, it was rough so all this stuff happened and unbeknownst to me it's anxiety mm. right yeah all of this crazy stuff and i'm talking bro Every day, I'm, I can move my head like this, and I, I get a little dizzy. I'm like, dude, this is crazy. Yep. So back to me stopping drinking, right? Three days into stopping drinking, gone, 100%. Right. All that anxiety I was having is gone. I'm like, wow. I'm not saying that's the answer for everybody. Right. But I'm just saying that you never know how your brain is going to change and the chemicals that are going on in your body. And then all the other stresses, because whenever you have stress, a lot of people probably know this, but some might not, but your body releases chemicals and stress hormones and all this other stuff in order to help you cope because it's trying to keep you alive and keep you sane right. so you can stay alive. And um, I don't know if that helps you in, in any way, shape, or form, but it's just yeah. uh, anxiety hits people in all different ways, right? And I think that's another stigma where kind of like mental health, it's like, oh, you got anxiety, all right, all right, dude. I mean, bro, <laughs> I got some people in my life that'll call me. They're on the side of the highway freaking the hell out because exactly. they're having an anxiety attack. There. And there. you're like, all right, man, we'll just try to breathe. Because what the hell are you supposed to do? What I mean, you're on the other phone. Thank God, I'm glad you called me. Right. But, like, you know, it's a it's a very interesting 
uh, phenomenon that happens solely in that individual's I, mind. I, you know what? I hate that it happened to you, honestly, because once it happens to you, it doesn't go away. That's what I've learned. Well, that's the thing that's interesting is, um, you know, I haven't drank again to see, but right. uh, I, I, do I have other little things of anxiety? Yeah, but I haven't had anxiety attacks. I haven't had that's good um, dizziness like that or anything. But at the same time, that's just me right now. Who's right. to say... It couldn't happen down the line. Right. Who's to say with additional stress? Because that's one thing, too, about stress is, you know, like kind of we talked about earlier, where I think once all this pandemic stuff goes away, people are going to be like, oh, man, I don't even know I was holding all that, you know? <laughs> right. I think that that's another exactly. thing that happens as you progress in life, too. You For know? sure. For sure. So how long have you been dealing with that, though? Like 20 years. Damn. Yeah. Like 20 Is there years. anything that you remember specifically that, that triggered the first one? Yeah. Like what was going on in your life? It was pot. Interesting. <laughs> it triggered it. Yeah. So I swear to God. And the thing was, was I was a pot smoker back then. I right. Was, I would smoke a lot of pot. But for whatever reason, that day, it just triggered just it. Just flipped it. And that was it. That should happen to me, too. That was it. I'm and telling I, you. And I, and I haven't been able to, uh, not that I've wanted to, but haven't smoked, smoked weed since. Right. Because yeah, it, it, like, will yeah. like, it will trigger it. will trigger it. not trying to party so, that hard, bro. Right. <laughs> but... And I've learned techniques too, like you were saying, like I, when I was like working out all the time and like in really good shape and good health, man, that you would always feel better, of course, and it, it would, it would lay low, but stress, stress, it will kick in with stress for me at least. Right. So I remember during law school, I was completely stressed out. And even when you're in the classes, like you, I mean, I would have panic attacks in the class and stuff. Oh, so man. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's crazy. It is crazy. It is crazy. And, it, and when it happens, it's, it's, it's like, man, it, 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 it overwhelms you and it sucks. But what, you know, what advice would you give someone else that's dealing, who's with, dealing it? with it? Yeah. Well, someone who's first dealing with it. I remember when, I remember when I, when it first hit me, I was like, man, is this ever going to go away? This is horrible. This is the worst thing in the world. It does go away. It gets better. It, you, you learn to live with it. You learn to cope with it. So when it starts happening, you have techniques. And everyone's going to be different. Everybody's going to be different with anxiety. You have techniques you'll learn that will soothe you, calm you down, and you'll get over it. I mean, that's pretty much all you can do is time. Yeah. But um, for me, it was it was seriously, staying in shape, keeping your mind busy. Um, not too busy. You don't want to be overstressed. But um, a nice healthy balance. I'm not healthy, exactly. And you know what I'm doing right now? I'm, my new thing this year has been reading. Oh, I've been oh, reading man. a lot. We all like the same so, page, man. Quite yeah. Literally. So I, I can I can get lost in a book, and and that's like very therapeutic yeah, for me. No, it's for like, sure. It's like it's like work. It's kind of like I, I tell people when I go on my walks. It's like moving walk, meditation. For sure. Uh, reading is the same thing, man. When I read, I'm like, oh, it's, it's like very, a break. Yeah, for, yeah. Sounds counterintuitive, but it's like a break from my brain. Totally. I'm like. Uh, I could just right. read this book now. Exactly. You know? And and like you said, taking a walk, man, working out. I swear, like a good sweat after that, man, you feel fantastic. So, um, so yeah, I mean, just keep your mind busy <laughs> is right. really the best way to do it in a healthy way. I love it. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. See? Absolutely. You didn't even know you were going to go down that path. And now no, we, I didn't. And we went I really down did. See? I love that. That's the All best right. part about it. That's I love right. it. That's true. I did well, not. um, Well, we're going to wrap this up. Um, appreciate you coming on. Man, it was a pleasure. Enjoy, especially it's driving awesome. literally from Lawrenceville. Yep. Brent, he's actually from Lawrenceville, so there you go. Here. Um, but uh, I'm glad we got to do this. Dude, you know what I'm absolutely. saying? Very fun. Appreciate you coming. Absolutely, man. Um, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. dude, absolutely. Um, everybody, appreciate you guys checking this out again. Um, I don't really know if you know anybody in this man's industry, but if you do, Utilize the network. Try to see if you guys yeah. can go and have that thirsty Thursday. That kind of sounds fun, right? Absolutely. If you're in the business, we do have those. And also, if you're if you're looking to buy, sell, refinance, convey your house in any way, Shaferts and Dean. Yep. See, just tell there you go, Danny. So. Um, yeah. Plus, Danny's the new guy, so make him look good because you know now he's got his <laughs> you know freaking he's part of the bar, bro. That's right. Um, for uh, for the rest of the podcast, so we still ha we have three other episodes. You can check those out on our YouTube page. This one will probably be up in the next day or two. Uh, we're going to take a break for April because baby Mike is coming, which we're super stoked congrats, about. Congrats, congrats. Thank you, thank you. Super excited. He's going to be huge. Um, <laughs> so I feel bad for Candace. But um, 
So we're gonna take a little break uh, is for he April. A Falcons fan or a Browns? No, he's gonna be a Browns fan, man. Really? All day, dude. Chubb, baby. Man. Oh man. Um, I was hoping we were gonna get JJ Watt, but that didn't work out. Um, I was super, super I excited, dude. <laughs> so I was like, man, we go kill this. Um, but um, but for May, so I'm gonna have Jessica carry on or Jessica Justine, however you have her name in uh, on Facebook. So she's gonna come on. It's gonna be great. Um, and then for June, we're going to have my man, Kevin Sellers. So he has a studio. So if you guys are musicians, check out Kevin's page. It's the vault recording lounge in Marietta. Friend him on, uh, on Facebook. If you haven't already, that's going to be really cool. And then in July, I'm really, really excited because I got my man, Austin Fowler. So by the time that he's going to be on the show, he'll have completed his psychology courses right and oh, his cool. he, he's getting uh, he's doing his uh i think his clinicals is what they're calling it right now but either way he's actually getting to practice right now uh and me and him really connect on that whole thing so man it's gonna be crazy so we got some really good guests coming up we're gonna take a break for april uh again we want to thank danny for coming out spending time thank with you. us appreciate you guys checking it out hope you guys have a great rest of your night we'll see you soon y'all take care